So let's see if we can solve this quadratic equation right over here. x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. And actually, they're cutting down some trees outside. So my apologies if you hear some, some chopping of trees. Well, I'll, I'll try to ignore it myself. All right, so back, 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 back to the, the problem at hand. And there's actually several ways that you could attack this problem. You could just try to factor the left-hand side and go that way. But the way we're going to tackle it is by completing the square. And what does that mean? Well, that means that I want to write, I want to write the left-hand side of this equation in, into the form x plus a squared plus b. And as we'll see, if we can write the left hand in this form, then we can actually solve it uh, in a pretty straightforward way. So let's see if we could do that. Well, let's just remind ourselves what how we need to rearrange the left-hand side in order to get it to this form. If I were to expand out x plus a squared, let me do that in a different color. So if I were to expand out x plus a squared, that is x squared plus 2ax, make sure that plus sign you can see, plus 2ax plus a squared, and of course you still have that plus b there, plus b. So let's see if we can write this in that form. So what I'm going to do, and this is what you typically do when you try to complete the square. I'll write the x squared minus 2x. Now I'm going to have a little bit of a gap, and I'm going to have minus 8. And I have another little bit of a gap, and I'm going to say equals 0. So I just rewrote this equation, but I gave myself some space so I can add or subtract some things that might make it a little bit easier to get into this form. So if we just, ma if we just match our terms, x squared, x squared, 2ax negative 2x. So if this is 2ax, that means that 2a is negative 2. 2a is equal to negative 2, or a is equal to negative 1. Another way to think about it, your a is going to be half of your first degree coefficient, so the, or the coefficient on the x term. So the coefficient on the x term is a negative 2. Half of that is a negative 1. And then we want to have, and then we want to have an a squared. So if a is negative 1, a squared would be plus 1. So let's throw a plus 1 there. But like we've done said before, we can't just willy-nilly add something on one side of the equation without adding it to the other or without subtracting it again on the same side. Otherwise, you're, you're, fundamentally changing, you're fundamentally changing the truth of the equation. So if I add one on that side, I either have to add one on the, if I add one on the left side, I either have to add one on the right side to make the equation still hold true, or I could add one and subtract one on from the left-hand side, so I'm not really changing the value of the left-hand side. All I've done is added one and subtracted one from the left-hand side. Now, why did I do this again? Well, now I've been able, I haven't changed its, its value. I just added and subtracted the same thing. But this part of the left-hand side now matches this pattern right over here. It's x squared plus 2ax, where a is negative 1, so it's minus 2x, plus a squared plus negative 1 squared. And then this, this part right over here, is the plus b. So we already know that b is equal to negative 9. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. And so that's going to be our b right over there. And so we can rewrite this as what I squared off in green. That's going to be x plus a squared. So we could write it as x plus, and I could write a is negative 1. Actually, like, let me. I could write it like that first. x plus a squared, or x plus negative 1. Well, that's just x minus 1. So I'm just going to write it as x minus negative 1 squared. And then we have minus 9. Minus 9 is equal to 0. Is equal to 0. And then I can add 9 to both sides. So I just have this squared expression on the left-hand side. So let's do that. Let me add 9 to both sides. And what I am going to be left with, so let me just, on the left-hand side, those cancel out. That's why I added the 9. I'm just going to be left with the x minus 1 squared. It's going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to, on this side, it's going, 0 plus 9 is 9. So if x minus 1, let me do that blue color. So going to be 9. 
And so if x minus 1 squared is 9, if I have something squared is equal to 9, that means that that something is either going to be the positive or the negative square root of 9. So it's either going to be positive or negative 3. So we can say x minus 1 is equal to positive 3, or x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. And you can see that here. If x minus 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9. If x minus 1 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9. And so here, we can just add 1 to both sides of this equation. Add 1 to both sides of this equation. And you get x is equal to 4. Or x is, if we add 1 to both sides of this equation, we get, my digital ink is acting up, I don't know. All right, that we get x is equal to negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So x could be equal to 4, or x could be equal to negative 2. And we're done. Now some of you might be saying, well, why did we go through the trouble of completing the square? I might have been able to just uh, factor this and then solve it that way. And, and you could have, actually, for this particular problem. But completing the square is very powerful because you can actually always apply this. And what you will, in the future, you will learn the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula actually comes directly out of completing the square. In fact, when you're applying the quadratic formula, you're essentially uh, applying the result of completing the square. So hopefully you found that fun.